you know, it's it's in the winter right now, and we're planning towards next hunting season, though. I mean, the hunting season just ended, but really, when you think about it, it's only seven seven months away in most most states. So we don't have that long, eight months at the most, where we're going to be out in the woods and, and whitetail hunting, and we need to prepare. And I want you guys to find more bucks this fall, and so I come up with five ways. We'll just get right to it. Where I think you can find five five ways you can find more bucks this fall. And it's not that does aren't important, but does are, are not the lowest hole in the bucket. Uh, especially the older a buck gets, easy to find does, hard to find mature bucks. If it was easy to find mature bucks, as easy as does, you'd see them every time out in the woods. How many times, now some of you might live in a fantasy land state and you see mature bucks, giant bucks every time you go out, but most of us don't. We see does are pretty easy, some young bucks, and then we get a crack at that older one. Then, uh, then we might only have two or three opportunities a year, and you gotta, you gotta uh, make hay while the sun shines. So you gotta take advantage of finding bucks, and it's all a numbers game. When you find a lot of bucks, then you might find that older buck you're after. In the first way, you have to hunt like a predator. So it doesn't matter if you're on public or private land. All five of these apply to public and private land. Anywhere a whitetail hunter hunts for finding more bucks, but you have to hunt like a predator. And the reason for that is it's not just about the hunt that you're on. It's not just about it's a good day, you're going out to hunt, you have the time off work, so you hunt. You always have to think about your next hunt. You think about the next week. Think about the rut coming up in three weeks. Think about that second rut coming up in early December. Think about a great October lull moment where there's a giant cold front coming through and the temperatures are dropping 30 degrees. You have to always be planning ahead. So if you burn out your hunt, if you go right in the middle of a bedding area and spook those bucks out, then you're not going to see them after. And so your percentage of sits that you see bucks and you see older bucks on most properties, whether public land or private, where people are hunting, then they're burning out future sits because they're not using quiet gear. They're not using quiet stands. They're thinking that some type of scent elimination gel or powder or contraption can hide your scent and make it so you're invisible to deer even though the scent's blowing right at them. You know, it might work here and there, but if you want to work 90% of the time, you have to play the wind. You have to approach correctly, so you're approaching around bedding areas. If you're going in the morning, and you're going into a bedding area, then you have to go well around those food sources or you're not gonna see those deer. And if you're hunting on a food source in the morning, you can expect you're probably gonna push a percentage of those deer off. They're not gonna be there in the afternoon, let alone the morning. So you really have to, whether it's managing your sight, your sound, or your scent. You have to manage that, have to hunt like a predator. I have lots of videos about that on my channel, so I encourage you to look at that. Advanced buck hunting strategies is one of my main playlists on the channel. And there's many ways that I talk about doing this, but bottom line is you have to get on and off your hunting grounds with the deer not knowing that you're on and off the hunting grounds. You really have to hunt so that there's no detection of you. Now the second point to find more bucks, get away from the food. You know a lot of times even on low pressure food plots it's a very small percentage of the time where mature bucks are coming out during the daylight on food plots. So and if you look at my top 25 bucks I've shot three or four. I shot one of them this year on a food plot. In fact Diane shot one of our our bucks on a food plot this year, the six year old uh, split brow buck. That was on a food source. That was the seventh day of the season. We don't hunt our food sources very often, so it gives us the opportunities. But the vast majority of my bucks that I shoot, up around 85 to 90% of my bucks are not shot on a food plot. They're not shot in a food source. And so by getting back in those buck bedding areas, by getting back in those secure areas, those funnels on the way to and from food, during the rut, I love hunting funnels between bedding areas that are away from food. Those are near food sources. Bucks are away from food sources. Whether you can even take that on private land, you have a giant food plot in the middle of your 40. Well, it's gonna push all the bucks off your land and you're only gonna have room for does and small bucks, young bucks. By relocating that food and creating that depth, then you can have more bucks. But bottom line is get away from the food. If you get away from the food, you get back in the cover, you're not gonna see as many deer. I know it's not as much fun, but if you're hunting in those funnels to food sources and not on the food source itself, if you're hunting maybe on a water source back in the timber, if you're hunting between bedding areas well away from food, it might even be that you're hunting an apple tree or something, but you're not hunting that main consistent food source draw 
green briar top mixed with white oak acorns down in southern Ohio, southern Indiana, southern Illinois, and some hill country area. Maybe an oak flat or island back in a swamp might be great as a hunting spot if those deer are going to ag fields every night and then you can slip into that area. So it's not that you might not be hunting food but not hunting the main food source in the area that attracts all those deer in the afternoon. It is so inviting to sit there and watch a lot of deer but you're not going to see a high percentage of older bucks and getting away from the food is the second way to see more bucks this fall. A third way, looking for fall and winter cover and that is so critical. We're in a spot right now where there's deer tracks all around us. We have mixed pockets of switchgrass, goldenrod, ragweed, and I don't know if you can see in the back, but you can see timber that's down. There's been some limited um, hinge cutting and, and dropping of trees back in that timber behind me to encourage sunlight to hit the forest floor. When sunlight hits the forest floor, we're not looking for herbaceous growth and green growth. That's not gonna drive your fall and winter herd or hunting season buck population. We're looking for hardwood regeneration, woody shrub trip, briars, fall habitat. Switchgrass is still going to be standing in different clumps. This switchgrass right here is already about 15 years old. I know the landowner here, and he needs to replant the switchgrass so that there's enough sustainable switchgrass all winter long to attract rabbits, pheasants, let alone deer during the fall. You can imagine with the snow down during the fall, then there's going to be a lot of deer that come into this location right here. And it's this mixed habitat and diversity, that fall habitat. So you're not focusing on herbaceous growth. You're not focusing on clover out in the fields, the big ag fields. What you're truly focusing on that'll drive a buck population, and especially as it relates to public land, looking for clear cuts, looking for hardwood regeneration areas, looking for diversity of habitat on large public land tracks where you have lowland upland hardwoods and a mix in between that's where you're going to find those bucks again away from those major food sources and back in those hardwood regeneration areas that's a sustenance for those deer and especially those bucks all fall and winter long and you're going to find does in those areas on public land too and that's where you need to look at a public land clear cut is almost like a cornfield you might not find as many mature bucks bedding right against it you're going to find those does and then you're going back in a point or two or in a hollow or on another side bench or on the other side of the swamp or in an island in the swamp and that's where you're going to find those bucks if they have that daytime browse they have to feed twice during the daylight hours then they're hitting that third feeding of the day uh, which is the major food source in the area could be a clear cut on public land ag fields food plots whatever it might be and then um, they're feeding twice during the night but it all boils back to finding that fall cover and with that fall cover often comes fall food because it needs a high stem count cover. Bucks need that thermal protection. Deer in general could be a mix of conifers, hardwood regeneration, swampland where everything comes together and you have that diversity. So not only do you have food source diversity and daytime browse, but you have daytime holding cover for the fall and winter daylight periods. Fourth, you need to increase the depth that you're hunting. And what I mean by that is when I'm hunting on public land, if I'm down in the Ohio hill country, if I'm up in a Michigan swamp, when I went to Pennsylvania this year, I'm really targeting about a 45 minute to an hour walk in. Now, if you have trouble climbing hills, that means you might try to find a flat bridle trail that goes way back into the hills, maybe a gradual incline. I prefer to go on a gradual incline for 45 minutes and then go uphill for 15, 20 minutes hard. And that'll distance myself from 90 to 95% of the hunters, but that also is where I'm gonna put myself in the wheelhouse of those bucks and that buck movement. And think about it, along the roads, a lot of sunlight coming in, a lot of diversity down in lowland areas where you have swamps at the edge of hardwoods. So what I find is that bucks don't have a general rule of bedding high or low. Now someone mentioned, well, I'm in Virginia and I'm in the mountain areas. I always see bucks bedding high, so I don't agree that bucks bed low or high depending on food. But if you look at it, in those areas, everyone's accessing low. So you'll have diversity low, you have food sources low, you have does low, guess where bucks are gonna bed? They're gonna bed high. And if you're accessing those mountains from the top, which is very rare, and a flat, a road that comes in, because usually if it's on top, there's no road that's going down, so it's a dead end road up there. But if you're accessing on the top of mountains, on the top of big hills, then those are probably gonna be those areas of diversity because it's opened up, even just food source and regeneration, grasses, whatever it might be, but deer are gonna feed high, people are accessing high, does are gonna be high around those food sources, and then bucks are gonna be on the lower benches 
uh, if, in those areas. But you have to put your distance from the road, increase your depth of hunting, especially when it comes to major food sources. And, and I'll, I'll even talk about there's areas where there's big, big public land tracks. I'm not even going to name where they're at. Um, you can find this almost anywhere, but you'll see private land ag fields, private land bait piles behind people's homes. And you can come in from four miles away, trek back three miles, get on top of a ridge, and you're a mile back from those food sources, and guess where you're at? You're right in the middle of those fall hunting season buck populations that are going back to that cover every day. That'll even take place during the rut as they're cruising from bedding area to bedding area, maybe between doe bedding areas, buck bedding, or between buck bedding, buck bedding. So great way to hunt in the morning, wait for those deer to come back to you. And that's a fourth way. Just put yourself some distance, get some depth. And if you have private land, that means, again, pushing that food off to one side so you can create that entire depth across your property, even if you only have 20 acres and your property's a quarter mile deep by 220 yards wide. You put that food towards the front of the 20 so that you have 330 yards depth behind that five acre food source. Now you have that depth on that 20 acre parcel. If you have a food source in the middle of a 40 acre parcel, then you can expect mature bucks to likely be bedding off your land because you only have 155 yards of depth in any direction. Think about that with uh, public land. When you're searching for those hunting season buck populations, you're not going to find them typically right up against the road, right up against the food sources. You're going to find them within that depth behind where you find a bunch of does. Great way to scout this time of year is to try to find where those doe populations are bedding. Find big tracks, little tracks, when there's no snow, you find big pellets, little pellets, doesn't matter what type of bed it is. Find the food source on one side of those doe populations that are bedding, and then you'll find the bucks on the other side of the does and fawns away from the food source. Great way to put yourself smack dab in the middle of a bunch of bucks by finding that depth. And finally, the fifth way to find bucks this fall is to avoid doe factories. Avoid those areas that have high stem count during the summer, quality food sources during the summer, because guess what? Those are extremely competitive with their summer fawning grounds. If you create great summer food sources, if you find great summer food sources, whether on public or private land, if you have high stem count, dry cover next door, whether it's areas like this, where you have lots of switchgrass, native grasses, goldenrod, ragweed, lots of summer cover, and if you put a major food plot right next to this or a major food source, even a summer food source on public land, then you're gonna attract a lot of does and fawns and those does and fawns stay. Those that are here today are here to stay. They're gonna stay with you into the hunting season and if they stay with you in the hunting season in those locations, whether it's private land that you're building or public land that you're scouting, the bucks aren't going to be there. They're not gonna be there during the daylight. And so you need to go back into the depth of cover, find where those, those bucks are going to be. And those doe factories are awesome to hunt during the rut because you could have a random buck coming through at any time, but you're not gonna have reliable movement if you have too many does and fawns. So you're always hunting to the outside of that. Avoid those doe factories, doesn't matter if it's on public land or private land. Get back into that depth of cover. Look for fall bedding cover, fall bedding types. Look for hardwood browse and regeneration. Make sure you're hunting away from the food sources. And finally, hunt like a predator. You really need to hunt like a predator over and over. Manage your hunting season like it's a marathon and not a sprint. You really have that option to look at your hunt, enjoy this hunt, but really plan, if I access this way on the way out, am I gonna ruin a hunt next week because I'm bumping out a potential mature buck location? Or can I get around this area and get around that mature buck, go the long way out or in, make sure the deer aren't hearing me, seeing me, or smelling me every time out. Make sure your gear your tree stands are dead quiet. Make sure you're blowing your scent away from those deer herds. And if you look for that fall cover and food and you get away from the food to hunt, look for those fall cover areas. You avoid those doe factories. You're gonna find a lot of bucks this fall and it doesn't matter if you're on public or private land. And again, if you just wanna shoot some does, that's the easy part. We're talking about a lower hole in the bucket today and that's mature buck hunting, finding those buck populations this fall. Hope you enjoy the off season scouting we are. And I just want you to have a great hunt this fall. And I look forward to hearing about it in the comments below.